Hello guys, welcome to Python and Machine Learning Daily. If you jump to Python from PHP background, like myself, I want to invite you to this video where I will explore the differences, the fundamental differences in syntax between PHP and Python. And this will be based on my course that I've prepared earlier on my pythonmldaily.com, which is called Python 101 for PHP Developers. I will not read that course in full in this video. I will focus on the differences in syntax, how Python and PHP treat different things like variable types, values, functions, loops, and other fundamental stuff for programmers. So by the end of this video, you should be prepared for two things. First, read Python code and understand it. And then second, write simple Python scripts, avoiding stupid errors and typos and IDE warnings, or at least you would understand them. And also I will link the full course in the description below, which will contain more information about Python functionality that you need to know as a PHP developer. But now let's dive into syntax differences between PHP and Python. First, variables. You have to have dollar sign in PHP and you don't need to have that in Python. Then, end of statement. Semicolon in PHP, just end of the line in Python. Then we have if statement. In PHP, it's with curly braces. In Python, it's colon and then indentation. So there may be another print down below with indentation of tabs or spaces, and that would be considered in the same block. Also with if statement difference is else if and l if in Python. And finally with if statement, you don't need to have brackets here for the condition. It's just a is bigger than five. Unless you have more complex conditions, then you may have brackets, but it's not necessary. In PHP, this is mandatory. Another important difference between PHP and Python is how they deal with different types of variables. So for example, in PHP, it's a very loose operation. So you may have string as a variable and then do plus five and the result will be calculated automatically, transforming that 10 as a string to a number. In Python, that wouldn't be allowed. In Python, you still don't need to define string or integer or something. Python would automatically transform that or cast that to a string. And this one would be a number. But if we launch that code, we will get an error. Can only concatenate string to string. And even PyCharm here is underlining with unexpected type. So if you want to perform such operation, you need to specifically cast number to int like this. And then if we launch, the result is successful without any errors. Another two differences I wanted to show you is how to concatenate the string. So in PHP, we use dot to concatenate two strings. In Python, we use the plus sign. In Python, there are other methods to concatenate the strings as well, like format or so-called F strings. But the general syntax is this difference. And also comments. For comments in PHP, we use double slash. In Python, we use the hash symbol. And for multi-line comments, in PHP, we use slash asterisk in the beginning and then asterisk slash at the end. In Python, people usually just use hash on every line. There is a certain syntax that would be interpreted as multi-line comments, but I don't even want to show that because I rarely see that in practice. Another kind of small but important syntax difference is about logical operators. And we get back to if statements here. In PHP, there are these symbols for and, or, and not operations. In Python, they are used as English words. So and, or, and not. And you can see the example Python code here below. The next quite important difference is that Python treats strings as objects. So if you want to perform some operations on the string, it's usually string dot method. In PHP, it's the other way around because there are methods that accept string as a parameter. In Python, it looks like this. So you have a string, you don't even need to define the variable. And then you may call the methods like this one with this result of this script. Another two differences, two in one, I wanted to show you is how Python treats the values of Boolean and null values. So similarly to PHP, you can assign true or false to variables. But if we launch that program, we will have an error 
name true is not defined. Did you mean true? And you can see uppercase here. So the values of Boolean in Python are case sensitive. So true is okay. False is also okay. But lowercase would not be recognized. And then the null values. In Python, there is no null value. Or there is, but it is called differently. If you launch that, null will not be defined or recognized. The value of empty variable is called none in Python. Now, if we launch, we shouldn't get any errors. Now, let's talk about loops, differences between Python and PHP. And I will read the examples from my tutorial on pythonmldaily.com. So, this is for loop in Python, which is equivalent of for each in PHP. In case of the list, which is actually, by the way, in Python is called list, not array. But if you call it an array, everyone will understand you anyway. So for variable in list, or if you want to have iteration like PHP for loop, this would be the PHP syntax. And this is the syntax in Python. Range function may be simple with just one variable or more complicated with start, stop and step like this. Next, while loop is pretty similar to if statement that we've seen already in the beginning of this video. So no brackets, no braces. And also important difference that I didn't mention is Python does not have plus plus operator for increment or minus minus for decrement. The syntax is plus equals one or whatever is your increment, which may be two or more. Next, let's talk about functions. In PHP, you define functions something like this. In Python, it's a different keyword called def, define. And then similarly to loops and if statements, no curly braces here, colon instead, and then indentation here to define that it's inside the function. Also important in PHP, it's called named arguments. In Python, it's also very popular because if you have for example, four parameters, four arguments, and you call that function like this, another developer wouldn't understand what is that true, what is that 20. So what often is done, you can call the variables like this with their names specified, especially with machine learning libraries that are, for example, methods with 10 or 12 parameters or arguments, and you need to define only three of them. So this is a very widely used syntax option. Another important difference about function is something that Python does fundamentally differently from PHP. The argument parameters are passed by reference, which means they change the value and the value is changed outside of the function. So you have my list variable, then you call the same my list twice, and it performs the same operation twice to the same list. In PHP, it wouldn't do that. In PHP, this variable would be considered as local variable to the function and wouldn't change any of the value of outside variable. If you wanted to achieve the same behavior in PHP, you would need to pass that as reference with ampersand syntax. In Python, this behavior is the default. And the final difference with function, you would notice that you would get warnings about styling if you don't pass a few spaces, a few line spaces between the functions. So Python standard code styling is two empty lines between the functions. So yeah, these are the main differences, the most probably important fundamental differences. If you jump from PHP to Python, this should be enough for you to understand Python code if you read it or to avoid silly typing mistakes when writing simple Python. Of course, there are more differences in terms of capabilities of Python. So there are functions that don't exist in PHP or for example, types of data like tuple. But this is not fundamentally about differences. This is about Python behavior. And I will link the full course, the text course that partially I'm reading here in this video. I will link that in the description below. You can see there are more lessons about, for example, CSV libraries and those complex data types like tuple that I mentioned. So I advise you to read all that course. It's free and it should give you a good start with writing Python code. And for more Python tips, of course, subscribe to this channel because I will keep shooting videos about Python. So you will definitely learn more syntax tips and tricks in the future videos. And see you guys in those other videos.